A warm welcome to distinguished guests. We're delighted to be hosting our third UNIPFI regional roundtable for Europe over the next two days, virtually, of course, now for the first time. Pleasure to be speaking to you against the backdrop of COP26, some have called the, the finance COP. We certainly have been hearing some encouraging developments. Um, between countries, we, we really, for the first time, have an agreed sense of direction. Nobody's questioning the need to head for net zero. Um, we have some very important commitments around uh, ending deforestation and cutting methane emissions and in other areas. We have a raft of new country commitments, particularly India with their net zero by 2070 and the aim to be power sector 50% reliant on renewables by 2030. And of course, we have a lot in the finance space, which we'll speak more of. Um, today, we have over 90% of global emissions are covered now by a net zero commitment. Um, just a year ago, um, analysts were saying that we were headed for 2.7 degrees of warming based on um, policy planning at that point. And now with these net zero commitments, we've dipped under two degrees, down to 1.8, 1.9. But of course, this is basically um, just based on commitments. The devil will be on the details here. Delivery will be key. And the private sector is certainly stepping up, particularly finance. Uh, Mark Carney led a, a, we can say, a tour de force last week on Finance Day, announcing firms representing $130 trillion in assets have committed to net zero under the GFANS alliances. Now, the big three GFANS alliances for asset owners, for banks, and for insurance underwriting are all managed by Unit FI, which we're very proud of. And it's at the center of our COP engagement strategy. So we have more and more ambition and commitment aligning with the Paris Agreement and the race to zero. <clears throat> but going beyond um, aligning loan books and investment portfolios with net zero, for me, a critical underlying alignment that has arisen at COP is across the financial sector. From the private sector to regulators, with now the, the Financial Stability Board announcing the expectation that Jeff, GFANS will start to report into it. And from the myriad of new approaches and metrics now seeing some convergence, particularly through the IFRS establishing the International Sustainability Standards Board, the ISSB, so that impact accounting will henceforth start to sit alongside financial accounting. This year at COP, as always, UNIPFI is very active in progressing the climate finance agenda, bringing the commitments that the Net Zero Alliance members have made to the attention of policymakers and beyond via a program of high level events, including certainly this one. We're already seeing financial institutions making near term commitments on emissions reductions. The Net Zero Asset Owner Alliance, which launched in 2019, has just released its first report on progress. 29 of its members have committed to reducing portfolio emissions by 25 to 30% by 2025. That's just four years out across three of the main asset classes. Um, and as new methodologies are developed, other asset classes will be added. But this is, uh, this is hard stuff and I think really good reason to be working together. Under the Net Zero Banking Alliance, uh, we've seen the first three signatories release their first uh, 2030 targets with all required to do so within uh, 18 months of signing. So this is truly the year for climate action and the financial community in many ways is answering the call. In September 2019, Antonio Guterres and CEOs representing 132 founding banks launched the UN Principles for Responsible Banking. Two years have passed and last month we saw the release of the first biennial progress report from this community of responsible banks, which are now 250 strong, Together, they manage um, over 40% of global banking assets. They serve 1.6 billion people. Um, this really is no longer a little green club, but really it's a much wider industry mobilization. So it's clear that the global financial markets have the bridge, uh, have the potential to bridge the sustainability gap by linking financial needs to global sources of funding. You know, analysts uh, project that around $4 trillion US alone will be needed just to decarbonize the global energy sector. So scaling up sustainable finance widely will a, be a challenging task. And uh, I think for which market guidance is necessary to help steer capital flows into an environmentally and socially sustainable direction. We need coherent definitions of sustainability across jurisdictions and a higher degree of standardization and transparency on data as certainly uh, driving forces to getting this done. 
as Europe leads the fight against climate change, transforming the financial system at regional and country levels is critical to direct the capital much needed for sustainable development. What we really firmly believe at UNFFI is that voluntary action from the finance industry, the so-called leaning in or change making ambition of leading banks, insurers and investors is not a replacement for regulatory action, but rather a complement to it. The relationship between public and private sectors is less a step function. So financiers, let's say, waiting for a price on carbon to start engaging, but it's more of a dance whereby each party makes a move that, that then signals the other to respond, building trust and the ratcheting ambition that the Paris Agreement was designed to foster. European financial institutions have been some of the most active in pursuing their own commitments and actions, and this action has been reinforced by a very active regulator, the most advanced globally. The groundbreaking uh, action plan on sustainable finance with its EU taxonomy looks to enhance standardization with clear definitions of what economic activities can be considered, considered environmentally sustainable. And I think this European ambition continues setting technical scre uh, screening criteria for sustainability, market standards, definitions, disclosures, and all relevant aspects needed to make sustainable finance an actionable reality. The EU taxonomy continues developing and evolving thanks to the work of the EU platform on sustainable finance by expanding definitions and clarifying scope. And the international platform on sustainable finance, the IPSF, is working towards a global common ground taxonomy. Now, UNFFI is actively uh, contributing to this work, you know, really effectively connecting this very tangible European ambition to global developments. Now, in order to keep delivering on our goals, we're working closely with our members and partners in the region. The European Investment Bank, increasingly the EU's climate bank, is one of our natural allies with whom, whom we have a really strong, uh, strong and long-standing cooperation. Now, I have the great pleasure that today we can count on Dr. Werner Hoyer, EIB's president, as our keynote speaker, who will really get us started on this, uh, the way forward that we can say from COP, from Glasgow. Well, while we deal with the pressing global threats, COVID-19 and the evolving climate crisis, this past year has really underscored the importance of a just and equitable transition that truly leaves no one behind. A whole ecosystem of net zero and biodiversity commitments, targets and actions financial sector is blossoming, but we really need crucially to ensure the integrity of financial sector actions and place impact and social objectives at the core of their strategy and operations. As such a significant driver of the global economy and a privileged one at that, Europe has a responsibility to lead the world in taking action on sustainable finance now, we're encouraged by the giant leap forward that you all are taking in Europe. We ask you to continue steering ambition to deliver a greener, fairer, and more resilient planet. I wish you all a successful event, and I leave now the floor to President Hoyer.